Good morning all. Today we are going to see why synchronous motor is not self starting. So if let us assume I have taken a synchronous motor, I have connected it to the three phase supply. So whenever you connect to the three phase supply where the windings are displaced by 120 degrees, let us take it as R, Y, B, then and the current is also displaced by 120 degrees, they are physically displaced by 120 degrees. So rotating magnetic field will be produced in the same sequence that means in the R, Y, B phase sequence. So in this way the rotating magnetic field is produced. Let us assume at any particular instant there is a north pole here, there is a south pole here. Now what happens this north pole will try to lock with this south pole and this south pole will try to lock with this north pole. So what happens this north pole is attracting the south pole and it is rotating in this direction. It will try to rotate your rotor in the same direction. So electromagnetic torque will be produced in the same direction. But problem what happens as the machines are very big or huge in size the inertia is more inertia is more because of this the rotor cannot pick up the speed. So as the rotor cannot just pick up the speed now what happens let us assume after some instant so the rotor has rotated in some direction so let us assume it is rotated by some small angle. So this is south pole this is north pole. So now what happens whatever the stator poles are there as they are rotating like this within very less time the north pole will interchange north pole and south pole because they are rotating at a very huge speed the north pole may reach here and the south pole will reach here. Now what happens this north pole will attract this south pole and this south pole will attract this north pole. Now what happens the torque will be produced in opposite direction. So previously direction is one now it is changed now what happens it will stop and try to rotate in the opposite direction. So because of this it cannot change so much frequently so it will stop. So practically let us see if you are giving the 50 hedge how fast the poles changes or how much fast it will change. If you are taking this this is my sine wave. So sine wave if you are taking 50 hedge so this will be nearly equal to 20 milliseconds. So within this much time it is changing the full or you can if you can tell that the maximum to maximum this peak to peak this duration is 10 milliseconds. So within 10 milliseconds duration it is changing from one polarity to another polarity. So the rotor cannot pick up that much speed so rotor will stop. This is one way of analysis. There is another way of analysis. We have seen in the induction motor in order to produce the unidirectional torque In order to produce the unidirectional spark, the relative speed between stator and rotor MMF should be equal to zero. Then only they will be locked. So if we take for the example of induction motor, at the time of starting you are giving three phase supply. So when the three phase supply is given, that stator rotates a rotating magnetic field, it rotates at NS. Now the rotor is stationary. So in the rotor bars, the EMF is induced. It is due to the relative speed of this. So EMF is induced in that and that will also produce the rotating magnetic field. So what is the relative speed between stator and the rotor? The relative speed between the stator and rotor is Ns minus Nr. This Nr is equal to 0 at the time of beginning. So that means the frequency of EMF that is induced in rotor is equal to F. Because of this the rotating magnetic field is produced. The rotating magnetic field will have the same speed as your stator. That means it will rotate at Ns. Or we can tell that the relative speed between these two is equal to is stationary the relative speed is equal to zero. Let us assume the rotor picks up the speed in the case of induction motor. You, let us assume my stator is rotating at ns and my rotor is already rotating at a speed of n. So now in the rotor conductors we have seen there that the frequency of induced EMF will be slip times the supply frequency. It will be equal to slip times the supply frequency. Getting it? So, and the rotor is rotating at 1 minus s times of ns and because of slip times the frequency, the s times of ns, the rotating magnetic field is produced on these conductors which are rotating relative to the rotor. So, total speed or relative speed of rotor MMF with respect to stator will be 1 minus s times of ns, this is the speed of the rotor plus s times of ns, this is the speed of rotor rotating MMF with respect to rotor. So, if you take the sum, again this sum becomes equal to ns. That means at any slip, the relative speed between the stator and rotor MMF is zero. That's why the continuous torque is produced there. We have discussed in detail in the induction motor. So if you have query, you can please go and check there. I will leave the link in the description above. Whereas in the case of synchronous motor, at the time of starting, this stator is rotating at a speed of NS, whereas the rotor is speed is equal to zero. So it is rotating at zero and there is no EMF induced because the poles are fixed in the rotor. It is unlike that of 
the case of induction motor. So, as the relative speed between stator and rotor MMF is equal to zero, so unidirectional torque is not possible, the motor cannot start. So, how can I produce the unidirectional torque? So, to produce the unidirectional torque, the relative speed between the stator and rotor MMF should be nearly equal to zero, then only it can be locked. So, what you have to do, you have to use some mechanism to rotate your rotor in the same direction as your original phase sequence and rotate it near to the synchronous speed, then give your supply to your rotor. So, whenever the supply is given to your rotor, it will be locked to your stator and unidirectional torque will continue to flow. Getting it? So, this may we can make the motor self-starting. So, next, next class we are going to see what are the different type of starting methods of synchronous motor. So, I hope this topic is clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.